Starbase is buzzing with activity as preparations are underway for the next launch. It's been several weeks since the last Starship launch, and now the excitement is building once again. The next Starship launch is sooner than we thought, which means preparations are more intense than ever. From constructing a new launch tower to completely redoing the heat shield on the next ship, there's a lot going on. In this video, we will dive into all the preparations, updates, and developments happening at Starbase. Before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. As we all witnessed, SpaceX achieved a significant milestone during the last Starship launch by successfully landing both the booster and the Starship upper stage into the ocean. However, there were still some minor issues that needed to be addressed. For instance, during the previous test flight on March 14, 2024, only two of the 13 landing engines managed to relight during the booster's controlled water landing attempt, which led to some engine-out issues primarily caused by liquid oxygen filter blockages. Additionally, the Starship second stage experienced unexpected heating during atmospheric re-entry due to clogged valves affecting attitude control. Looking ahead, experts are optimistic about the upcoming fifth flight of Starship, which is expected to demonstrate further advancements. The next launch is anticipated within the next few weeks, as SpaceX prepares to possibly catch the Super Heavy booster with the chopstick arms of the giant launch tower at Starbase. The prototypes set for this mission are Ship 30 and Booster 12. Ship 30 has undergone several design revisions, such as new vent designs and relocated antenna arrays, and completed its static fire test in early May. Ship 26 had been at the mass's outpost for a few weeks, undergoing a static fire test on the newly built static fire test stand. The aerial views show the flame trenches looking almost new, with no major damage incurred during the test. Ship 26 has since been removed from the stand, placed on its transport stand, and rolled out of masses down Highway 4 to the Rocket Garden. The new structural test stand at SpaceX's masses outpost is rapidly evolving. Currently, the third level of the stand has been completed, and parts for a potential fourth level are already visible. This new test stand is designed to accommodate various tank sizes and configurations, which is crucial for testing the structural integrity of different components of SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy rockets. The FAA and SpaceX have also initiated an environmental impact statement at Launch Complex 39A in Florida. This process involves a detailed analysis to assess the potential environmental consequences of the planned activities and to ensure compliance with federal regulations. One of the key factors prompting this environmental impact statement is the introduction of new designs for the Starship and its Super Heavy booster. According to the documentation, these new designs include 35 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster and 9 Raptor engines on the Starship. This significant increase in the number of engines requires a comprehensive evaluation of the environmental impacts, particularly concerning noise, air quality, water resources, and wildlife. The reference to 35 Raptor engines suggests a potential future configuration where Super Heavy boosters might feature 15 inner engines, which would align with the new thrust simulator stand for testing. This setup is designed to simulate the intense thrust and operational conditions the boosters will encounter during actual launches. One of the most ambitious plans for the upcoming fifth flight is to catch the Super Heavy booster using the Mechazilla arms a bold strategy that has never been attempted before. The concept involves using the tower's mechanical arms, nicknamed Mechazilla, to catch the returning booster by its grid fins. This method eliminates the need for landing legs, reducing the rocket's weight, and enabling a quicker turnaround for subsequent flights. The idea is that by catching the booster with the launch tower, SpaceX can reposition it onto the launch mount, potentially ready for another flight within an hour. During the fourth test flight, SpaceX simulated this booster catching technique using a virtual tower. The booster executed a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, successfully demonstrating its controlled descent capabilities. This virtual simulation provided valuable data and confidence that the system could work with an actual launch tower in future tests. 
Musk noted that the successful landing on the virtual tower would allow the company to proceed with attempting to catch the booster on the real tower in the upcoming flight. The testing process for the Mechazilla Tower began earlier this year, with SpaceX performing basic tests on the mechanical arms. These tests included lifting, opening, and swinging the arms to ensure they could handle the load and movements required to catch a landing booster. These important tests have shown promising results, leading SpaceX to believe that the system is ready for a real-world application during the next flight. By reusing rockets more frequently and reducing turnaround times, SpaceX can significantly cut costs and increase the frequency of its launches. Now, whenever SpaceX plans to launch another rocket, we worry more about the Federal Aviation Administration license than technical problems. Following the fourth Starship flight on June 6, 2024, the Federal Aviation Administration conducted a safety review and updated the launch license to allow SpaceX to proceed with their next flight, set for late July 2024. This approval came with specific conditions designed to streamline the process. The Federal Aviation Administration's reaction to the fourth flight was generally positive, acknowledging that SpaceX had met all necessary safety and licensing criteria. However, the agency continues to monitor SpaceX's operations closely. For example, an environmental group recently announced its intent to sue SpaceX over alleged violations of the Clean Water Act related to their launch operations at Starbase. When we think about the fact that Musk plans to launch 1,000 starships in the future, it's hard not to wonder how he will handle all the licensing issues and environmental people for each launch. This is where the concept of a portfolio launch license becomes crucial. A portfolio launch license is designed to cover multiple launches over a specified period, rather than requiring individual approvals for each flight. This type of license can significantly streamline the process and reduce bureaucratic delays. Currently, the Federal Aviation Administration requires a separate license for each launch. This is time-consuming and unnecessary, particularly for a company like SpaceX that aims to increase its launch frequency dramatically. While working day and night for the next flight, SpaceX is also competing fiercely with other space companies to secure some of the largest contracts in the space industry. Recently, SpaceX, along with Blue Origin and United Launch Alliance, granted a share of $5.6 billion in Pentagon launch contracts. The competition for these contracts is intense. Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, and United Launch Alliance are all rushing to establish themselves as reliable launch providers and finish SpaceX's dominance in the industry. For example, Blue Origin is working on several ambitious projects, including the New Glenn rocket and the Blue Moon Lunar Lander for NASA's Artemis program. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.